Hey guys, how you doing today? Um, I want to talk about this beautiful plant right here. I absolutely love it. It is one of my absolute favorites. Um, you can see, look at the purple on the back of this. This is my boat lily. It's also called a, it's a Tridenscanthia spathacea. I'll put the name on, but commonly known as the boat lily or an oyster plant. It's also called a spiderwort or a moses in the cradle. Um, it has many, many names. Um, I grew up around this plant. My mom had it and she always called it a boat lily. Um, now this plant is poisonous so you do have to be careful around dogs, cats, um, children, <laughs> anything that likes to eat our plants in our house but um, it's usually the sap because when you break it it gets like a sap on it kind of like a Hoya and that can also if you have sensitive skin it can cause you to be itchy um, I have really really sensitive skin but it does not bother me thank God because I mess with this plant a lot and always taking propagations off of it but this plant is super easy to grow. I mean, if you are a beginner plant person and you want something very easy that if you, I mean, you can overwater this plant, you can underwater this plant, and it just keeps going. I mean, you can't, this plant is almost impossible to kill unless, like, you set it on fire. <laughs> I mean, you cannot kill this plant. It's crazy. And she's so beautiful. I mean, if you are in love with dark leaves and then that purple undertone, I mean, you can't, you just, you can't go wrong with this plant. I mean, look right here, all the roots that this is sending out. I don't know if you can actually see it, but there's little air roots coming out. And this plant is just absolutely fantastic um it's actually native to southern uh mexico and it also comes from belize and i think guatemala if i remember correctly um so you're you know like southern mexico i mean you're you're talking pretty darn hot and um they are very very drought tolerant and um uh, Granted, they would have a lot of humidity in southern Mexico or like Belize or Guatemala. I, I, it's very humid there, so that's probably what keeps them going, even in drought. But um, a lot of people, like in Florida, uh, Texas, Arizona, etc., it they grow these as ground cover outside, and I think it would be like zone 9 through uh, 11 I believe it was but um, I mean I, I can just imagine this as a ground cover plant outside and oh, man I would love it but um, this would just be gorgeous I mean you just the colors of the back of these leaves are so beautiful but, um, I mean, as far as though for growing it in the home, um, it is really easy. I mean, you, I can grow this on a south window or a west window. Um, it grows really good under a grow light or an LED light. Um, you want to keep it, you want to keep the light bright enough on it to keep these beautiful dark leaves and then this purple undertone color if you get it in a lower light because it will actually grow in a lower light, light situation but if it's there long enough it will start fading the green will start like you can see all the new shoots coming out how they're a little bit of a lighter green color when they first come out when they're new the plant will kind of turn that lighter green color 
um, and the purple will start to fade if she's in a little bit lower light. And I've done those that you know to this plant before, but as soon as you put her back into bright light, she darkens back up and the purple darkens back up. So it's super easy. Um, now it, like I said, I grow mine in a south or west window. And you can also grow it under a grow light. She does really well. Um, the soil, I, I just keep mine in a very well draining soil, just uh, whatever kind of soil. I don't use any kind of specific soil. I just get whatever I can find. And I mean, I don't go by and <laughs> I don't go by in super duper cheapest you know, cheap, nasty, yucky soil, but, um, you know, I just maintain a, a good price and a nice looking soil, um, but I just, I add perlite to her and let her drain down, you can also use sand, um, you could use, uh, any kind of, uh, aquarium gravel or anything like that for aeration down through your soil mixture. I personally don't use bark anymore because uh, those of you who have probably already heard me say this before, I think it's attributing to the fungus gnat situations that everybody's having. Um, because once you water that bark so many times and it's mixed with soil, um, it that bark isn't going to dry out properly. The soil is going to dry out before the bark dries out. And I know this because I used to grow my orchids in, in bark. And once you've watered them like for a month or two, uh, and especially if you have them mixed with soil, because I have a lot of ground orchids that I, I used to put soil and bark together. And that bark, when you get in there, that bark, after a while, it does not dry out. And it, it's staying wet in the pot. So, well, anyways. Um, but I let my soil dry down about halfway in my pot. And I've got her in a pretty big pot. It is a... This is a... I believe it says one gallon or one and a half gallon in a big pack. She is a big girl. But um, I let mine dry down about halfway. It's plastic pot because I don't want to keep watering her all the time. Now in the winter time when it gets deep winter like right now um, you know we're in fall. I'm still kind of in my same watering schedule but in the winter depending you know I may let her dry down a little bit more. Because if you're keeping her in really, really bright light, like she likes, I would say let it dry down about halfway and then let her, give her a good watering. Rinse all of her leaves off. I take mine in and I put it right in my shower and I spray my whole plant. Um, give the leaves a nice dusting and a bath. She loves it. And then put her in a nice area where she can dry off quickly, like in front of a fan or whatever. Um, but you may want to cut back on watering a little bit if you don't have her in a really bright light. Um, you may want to let her dry almost completely down before you're watering her. Um, because of course if she's not in bright light, she's not going to be using all that water like she does in bright light or if, like I grow mine out on my front porch. And I've had her out on my back patio, and, you know, she's getting a lot of morning sun, and she was pretty much needing a drink almost every other day um, in summer. But these are beautiful plants to grow outside <clears throat> in a hanging pot, or in your house in a hanging pot. I have her in a hanging pot, and I just, I love this plant. It is one of my classic favorites, just like the spider plant. But, um, and the propagation, oh, and feeding, I do feed this plant all the time because she grows all the time in a bright window, 
this plant will just keep growing all winter long. So this is one of those plants where, and I, I will say it again, I know a lot of people don't agree with me that I've been growing plants a very long time and um, I feed my plants in the winter time. Plants are growing, they need to have food or you're going to end up with small leaves. Um, you're going to have a plant that's looking all whacked out of joint and it's just going to, um, if, the, if, she's, if your plant is trying to grow, it needs food. So, and not all plants do grow in the winter time. I have a few that just sit there and do nothing. And that's fine. But if your plants are growing, you need to feed them. I feed her worm castings and she also gets fish emulsion mixed in with her water. Um, the, the worm castings is once a month and um, she gets fish fertilizer just about every time I water her um, and she will grow like crazy for you and be big and beautiful when I bought this plant I think I got it like two or three winters ago and it was like three or four cuttings I forget now exactly but you know this is what she's done in just a couple of years and I have taken tons of clippings off of this plant and gave it to people and she just keeps growing and growing and growing and growing it's crazy but um and as you can see it is kind of a clumper i mean it clumps up when it grows and it just like you could pick this off snap this piece off right here and you can throw it in water you can throw it in soil you can throw it on the carpet and it would probably <laughs> take off and grow roots. I mean, this plant is crazy. I absolutely love this plant. I mean, you you cannot ask for a better plant for a beginner or even an old grower. I mean, this plant is beautiful. And um, it's just so, so easy to take care of. And she's not fussy. You know, it, it, she's just a great great plant to have and it's very beautiful I mean I just love all the purple I, I hang mine up a little bit higher so that I can see my plant but I can also see when it's hanging down I can see the underside of my of my leaves because it, she's just so so pretty so yeah I mean just propagating her is super easy um, and a really, really a great, great plant. If you have room for a big, tall, huge hanging plant, I mean, because this thing will just keep getting longer and longer and trailing down and it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. But, um, I think I have gone over everything. Um, so... I guess that's it I am going to let you guys go and if you have a chance and you see this plant in Walmart or Lowe's or you know somebody you know a friend a parent whoever that has this and it's big enough to take a cutting from get it because it is a beautiful plant it's a fast grower and she is probably I'd say in my top five plants that just, she doesn't care what you do to her. And I mean, I've overwatered her, I've underwatered her, I've put her in super bright sunlight, I've had her in shady locations where she's barely gotten any light at all, and she just keeps going. So, beautiful, beautiful plant, boat lily, uh, tritoscampia. Just a gorgeous, gorgeous plant all the way around. So I am going to let you guys go. You take it easy and have a great day, guys. Bye. Peace.